Hey everybody, Yvonne here with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I'm going to show you guys how we are making some of our own coiled beads, like coiled wire beads. I think this is a very good first coiling project if you are new to wire wrapping or new to coiling and wire weaving and just want to kind of get your get your hands dirty, um, get some experience under your belt before tackling more intricate projects. And this is also part one of this video <laughs> that I'm going to be working on um, kind of a steampunk necklace. I think that we might have a little gemstone set and like some different weaving in on this one and these beads are going to be what I have traveling up the neckline in between other uh, gemstone or glass beads just whatever we end up deciding to use so I am using tape runner on a note card to just kind of keep track of the different lengths of coils that we're making and what size bead that it makes just for uh you know both of our references like for me to use and for you to use hopefully that's helpful to you um i'm gonna need a ruler and we're gonna get right into it so what i'm using for the core wire is 18 gauge and this isn't a vintage bronze color this is just what i'm working with um and then i also have over here kind of stacked okay because this is the super ultra high-tech way that I use to keep my wire from coming unspooled but I also have some 26 gauge and antique copper toned and all of this wire is enameled so you don't have to worry about it tarnishing though this does look really cool done in bare copper or even sterling silver if you're uh, if if that's budget enough for you um rather if you can fit sterling silver into your budget i currently cannot so <laughs> enameled wire but it works great it doesn't irritate my metal allergies it's very durable some might say super durable um and it's mega affordable this isn't sponsored or anything i just really enjoy parawire's products we sell some on our website links are down in the video description below but also i highly recommend just heading directly over to the parawire website um to see just all the different colors and everything that they have. So we're gonna be using 26 gauge and I'm gonna be using it off of the spool. If that's troublesome for you, um, just kind of pull off maybe an arm's length, like an arm span length, where you're holding it in one hand and then the other hand, and then you pull it off of the spool until you have a full arm's length. Whenever, you, whichever way you go about it, you are going to want to make sure that your wire isn't kinking up on you. If you see it starting to do this, just be slow and patient with it and come through and kind of straighten those kinks back out. And now to keep this on the spool and cooperating while we do our coiling, if there's any loose wire coming off of your spool, I just coil it back on very loosely. And then I'm going to set another larger spool on top of it and these are one of the tools that we'll be using today is a coiling gizmo and this one's by artistic wire but it comes with like a table clamp and four different sizes of rods i actually um had purchased two of these so i've got doubles of some of the rods but i'm going to be using their thinnest rod and then i'm put, just putting the other rods down the center of this spool to keep everything like lined up but this is about two maybe two and a half millimeters in diameter you could also use um maybe a very very thin knitting needle or a piano wire just something that's very stiff like a hanger wire um because you don't want your core wire that you're shaping your bead around to be moving a whole bunch and you could use a thicker core as well. Um, with the 18 gauge, you could go thicker into the 16 gauge zone, but it can be kind of hard on your hands. And if you're finding the 18 gauge is difficult, maybe try out a 20 gauge, um, as that might be a little bit easier to work with. But I do like to use a nice stiff core wire on these beads that way whenever we thread them they just they hold their the beads are more likely to hold their shape 
so that's the why behind why I'm using 18 gauge. And then I like the 26 gauge, you could use 24 gauge wire as well, but I like the 26 pretty well. It's, it's a nice balance of, because you could use 28 gauge, which is even thinner, the larger the number, the thinner the wire with, with you know, wire wrapping. Um, you could use 28 gauge, but the coil amount is not going to be the same. So, and you could use 24 gauge, but it's not going to take as many coils because it's just slightly thicker and that adds up. So the way that we're going to be doing this, let's zoom on in, is we have our core wire and we have our coiling wire. So core and coiling or weaving. Whenever I'm doing um, a project that has weaving, it's I have multiple core wires and then my weaving wire. So, and this isn't like uh, industry standard terminology. These are just the words that I'm going to be saying and what I mean by them. So uh, we're going to begin by wrapping with about an inch of tail, wrapping this 26 gauge wire around our 18 gauge. So that's two coils. I'm going to zoom in even further. Woo, that's way too far. Okay. I'm wondering if I can be this zoomed in. No. Okay. And if it's just going to be blurry. Please pardon me while I figure out how to do this stuff that I should already know how to do. There we go. Okay. So right here seems to be as close in as we can get. So we have those two coils. And I'm just bracing my finger up against that. And then there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, you'll want to start just slow and steady in the, uh, about every 10 coils. I like to give it a little bit of a smush. If you're not able to use your fingernails, some nylon jaw pliers like these here can be really great for just, I hold on to the core wire just enough that it can butt that wire up against itself. And I'm going to start, like I'm going to show you how I do it quickly. So there's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and give it a smush. And the more shoulder to shoulder you can make your coils, the tighter and more tidy your coil, your final project is going to be. So if I were doing, you know, like that, and then smushing it together, you can see it kind of has a little bit of spring back. It's a little bit messier, so let's do... So that brings it up to, I think, 30. But yeah, you can see it kind of compounds. That looseness starts to build up. And we start getting almost like a jagged fence row type, as opposed to the nice, even tightness. So if you're finding your work looking a little bit more like this than what you're looking than what your goal is um, you may want to try being a little tighter with how you're laying your coils down now this is not the end of the world if that happens come in with those handy nylon jaw pliers and I am working towards the tip of my wire here on this too and I'm coiling from front to back so it goes whoop, around this way as opposed to around towards me. So I'm going to move my pliers in that same direction and just kind of cinch down. Our coil wire. And so you can see that does that tightened it up a little bit. Tidied it right up. So I think that brought us up to 40. And then we're going to go you also don't want to be accidentally hooking the previous coils. So if that happens, just uncoil a little bit until you get to the messed up stitch. And then we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
and smush. I, I like to do a smush every 10 coils just because it keeps me keeping track of where I'm at and like staying mindful about what I'm doing. That way I don't get like 200 coils in and back here, like in the middle, I've, you know, uh, had a misstitch or something. So, okay. And then let's do five more. One, two, three, four, five. So that gives us our first 25 millimeters or one inch. It's pretty close. Close enough for government work. Oops. And so now instead of snipping to do the gradiated coil beads for this project, I'm gonna scooch this down and I'm going to do a very wide stitch. So I've pulled this, you know, my wire far off to the right. I'm gonna brace right here, hooking that with my thumb and then budding my fish, my first fingertip here. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and then give that a smush. So now you can see we have like this skipped stitch and I'm now going to do 65 coils. And we can just pull on our wire. Now I've zoomed out for this one so that you can see how my hands move in relation to each other. So that was five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and smush. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and that's twenty smush. And so the reason why I like working off the end of my wire here is um, I'm not having to like make a large motion with my hands. I can just nice and tight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're almost halfway there. And then just, I'd really like to make a clamp that goes on the table that just has like a spindle for me to put my, um, spool on like a spindle with like a spring lid that makes like a pressure point right here to keep the spool on so oh I've lost count I think that's 30 oh one two three four five six seven eight nine forty and at this point I can come in to where the, our skip stitch is and I'm just going to snip with, I like flush cutters that are flat on the side like this that have a blunted tip because I can get right up against that core wire and snip it. So now I have two separate coils and I'm just gonna scooch this one down. Let me zoom back out. But yeah, I'm just gonna hold on to the core wire with my pliers and scooch that down just to make room. And this is a great way of not losing track of all of your coils that you've made. Oh, I think that's, was that 50? I think so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, sixty. One, two, three, four, five. Swishing that down. We can always measure it. No, I think that's just now 55. So let's do 10 more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So again, uh, I do like to count coils, um, but you could just use a ruler and kind of eyeball it every time or, you know, however makes you happy. Now, whenever we get this far in, I am going to pull the wire down some. And we're gonna do our skip stitch and then 75 coils this is also why I like having this reference sheet because yeah now you can see this one is just a little bit longer and that is because when I pulled it off of the core wire to set over here it released its tension a little bit which is why I like to count the coils as opposed to just measure it because sometimes even though I've smushed it it might still spring back open but yeah we're gonna do that skip stitch like that again just come in a nice loose stitch 
and then bracing my thumbnail against it right there you could also use pliers to hold though I find if I do that with metal jaw pliers it pin it can pinch the coiling wire so I do again like to use my nylon jaw they're like replacement you like replacement fingers <laughs> there's two three four five six seven eight nine ten and smush I'm just pulling more wire off the spool. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, I always get a lot of folks being like, well, why don't you just use a drill? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. Um, and drills are great and are would definitely be useful for a project like this, but it's kind of I think it's a very good idea, especially for a beginner, to go nice and slow, build up your foundation technique of doing it by hand, and then ease yourself into using a drill uh, for making your coils, just so that sometimes a drill is not always suitable for a stage in a project. Whenever it's just coiling on a single wire like this, drill away. But whenever you're working on a piece and there's multiple wires coming out of it and you know so it's nice to be able to be confident in your hand coiling skills. So that's why we're not going over using a drill today. And I'm just gonna Oh, I've messed up my wire spool. There we go. I'm just gonna pull some more wire off of that and I've lost count again so I think that's still 30 zooming back out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 so now we're up to 50 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, sixty. Sixty one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seventy. Seventy one, seventy two, seventy three, seventy four, seventy five. Very cool. Okay. So now I'm going to snip. Let's zoom back in again because I want you all to be able to see what's up. So I'm just coming in and snipping right in the middle of that skip stitch. Being very careful to make sure that I'm only hitting or only snipping that coiling wire because I don't want to be snipping the uh, inside. And then whenever it's the end end, as it is here, I'm going to come in and just snip nice and flush and now we're going to do the snip and smush. So I'm coming through with my bent nose pliers and just trying to burnish in those pokey bits. So I'm going to turn this and I'm going to try my best to demonstrate so you can see what I mean. But so here you can see how this little wire is kind of poking off to the side there like that. So I'm going to come in and just kind of give it a smush and a tidy with my plier tips. You can use any pliers that you like. I have a particular fondness for these uh, bent nose pliers that I got like a decade ago for six dollars. <laughs> they just they just work. So now I'm going to come through and I'm going to do this to each of the ends of my wire. I don't want to do it too hard because sometimes you can burnish through like you can kind of pinch the wire too hard and it'll cut it um, and I also don't want to burnish it so hard that it forces um, sometimes you can cinch the wire down too hard on your core wire and then it won't slide as easily and we want to be able to maintain that little bit of sliding so like with most things practice will make for progress but um, just be patient with yourself, be patient with the project. So I snipped that little end off. And these beads that we're making with this can be used for anything. Earrings, bracelets, all sorts of stuff. Okay, so I've smushed in all the ends. And we're going to zoom back out. 
And now we're going to be using the two and a half millimeter mandrel that comes in the coiling gizmo kit. Links to all this stuff are down in the video description below. And I'm gonna scooch down. That's our small bead, our medium bead, and here we'll have our larger bead. But I just wanna come through and give yourself a nice little bit of tail wire, like about an inch to push around. And we're just, it's just like how we were making the coil on this, but larger. So there's one coil and then there's two. And at this point, I want to push that coil up all the way to the base of that coil we had just made. And I'm going to hold that there with my fingers to make sure it doesn't just get pushed away. And I am going to shape this around. Once we get it going a little, I can let go and let it expand naturally. And we're just going to continue stacking these shoulder to shoulder, just making the coils like so. And then once we get to right there, I'm going to wrap once and twice. And then we're gonna do, just like before, a skip stitch. So I've bent off the wire to the side a bit, like further to the right than what I would. And then we're gonna go one, two, and we're gonna push that coiled bit up to the base of as much as it'll fit to right there. And then I'm going to bring this around once we got that first full rotation, I'm going to let go of right here so it can expand naturally. And there we go. Just again, keeping it nice and stacked end to end. And then there's one full rotation. And let's do a second full rotation. I'm gonna scooch these down on our mandrel do that skip stitch then we're gonna go one and two and let's press that coil up all the way as tight as it'll go and then we'll do one loop around now if you don't press it ow I just bit my tongue <laughs> If you don't press it up against, then whenever you're making the coils, it will just keep pushing the spring back. So you'll want to provide a little bit of tension there initially. So there we go. And then there's one, two, and one to grow on. So from here, this is way too stiff for me to just use my fingernails on, but using my nylon jaw, works out pretty well. And you can see the size difference for the small, medium, and large. It's not, not too different, but different enough that it does give a nice gradiated effect. And you could continue making, like I have ambitions for doing an 85 coil, a 95 coil, and a 105 coil, and that will complete the necklace. But let's come in right here and snip. And this is a good opportunity for us to do the snip and smush. So every time I snip a wire, especially whenever it's on a strong mandrel like this, I like to take that opportunity to just smush in that end so that there's no pokey bits. And then we're gonna come in here and snip right on the skip stitch. And then I'm gonna pull that bead off. Now you can see this is a pretty robust little bead and if we used too thin of a core wire for our coiling, you might get a flimsier bead. So that, that's something to watch out for. So I'm gonna snip again, right there. I just put my thumb over it because it's a practice of mine that um, I, n I never wanna snip something and have a rogue piece of wire go choo, right into my eyeballs. So I line up my pliers and then I snip. So from here, we can go ahead and just pull the mandrel out and you can see no harm to the mandrel even with all that smushing we did so now from here um let's see I'm gonna kind of gnaw my way in there's one 
and then there is where do I want this next cut to be okay I'm gonna go right there and then I'm gonna come into right here there we are because I want for there to be oh that was one short well I wanted there to be two coils here on this end that's okay though so I'm just going to come in and I want to snip on the same side snip there so I want the snip to be here hmm. so it looks like I can come down one more snip yeah and now they match on the ends so there's one bead now I'm going to snip right here and then and you can just turn and kind of decide for yourself how you like how you like your beads trimmed it's pu almost purely aesthetic you just want to leave at least one little coil to keep the ends from sliding off and what I mean by that is I don't want our coiling to just slide off the end so that's why I want at least one little Oops, one little wrap like that. And then we're gonna come in here. Let's go ahead and do the snip there and then bring it around and do the snip there. So now we could use bead stringing material like this beetle on here and we could take this and oh I got it mixed out of order okay and you can just thread them on as though it's a regular bead so you could thread it on thread on another bead And then another homemade bead and then it's just it's a nice way of it's not quite making bead caps but I mean that's cute I think <laughs> and it's definitely a nice way of making a little wire wrapped necklace that has a lot of flexibility to it by using this um, bead along beading wire or bead stringing wire but what we, another thing that we can do is with that same 18 gauge that we were using, I'm gonna come in and use my nylon gel pliers to straighten, well, there goes my ruler. Gravity still works. Straighten that out. And then just like in our masterclass lesson one for wire wrapping, we can make just a little bead link out of it. And this is something that you could add Oh, where are those boxes of beads at? There they are. And all, I, I'm sure I've said this already, but just in case you're just now popping in, uh, all the tools and materials that I'm using here are listed down in the video description below. And um, a lot of them are affiliate links, so uh, if you purchase through them, it helps support our channel at no additional cost to you, which I think is always nice. But yeah, so I'm just taking some little 3 millimeter beads from this assorted bead pack. And just putting a little bead on either end and you could do that out of any gemstone or faceted like Swarovski crystal or metal or you know what have you and it's just kind of a fun way of implementing a little bit more uh, style and design now you could do a wrapped loop though with the 18 gauge core wire I think it's perfectly acceptable to just do a bend of about 10 millimeters and then make a little loop with our pliers here and we'll scooch that down and so there you can see how that's looking you can also see how it tears up my fingernails that's all right though these are working hands and so we'll come in on the other side 
in bend with our, you can see how I leave just a little bit of space for my plier jaws to fit. Then I'm going to bend just a 90 degree like that. Oh, don't roll off too much. And then give it a snip. Boop. And then we will continue. And you can see I actually have a notch on my round nose pliers that I filed in there. Um, so that I can make slightly, hopefully, <laughs> consistent loop sizes. You can see these aren't exactly the right size, or exact same size as each other, but I think that's fine. And so you can make these and just link them together. You could make them and hook them together with jump rings. Um, it really, it, it just opens up a whole plethora of possibilities now that you can make your own coil beads. So I really do hope that this was helpful to you guys. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. Um, I do love hearing from you guys. You can also send us emails at backtoearthcreations at yahoo.com. That way, if you have like a picture of your work that you're like, hey, this is the problem I'm having. Can you help me troubleshoot it? Or if you just want to be like, hey, I did a thing, <laughs> you can send us an email with a picture. And uh, that's probably the best way to get hold of us uh, is via email. Um, if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, as well as stay up to date with when we have new tutorials coming out, um, please sign up for our free newsletter over at our website, backtoearthcreations.com. Uh, and yeah, we send out a newsletter for when we have shop updates, new tutorials, and live streams. Um, we also have our Happy Crafter Club for just a dollar a month or more, depending on if you want a booty box. Uh, that's another great way to help support the channel. So again, links to everything are down in the video description below. And thank you all so, so much for being here. And until next time, you guys, happy crafting. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>